Fora TV. The world is thinking. The feminists grabbed our women, the liberals banned our guns, the health cops snuffed our cigarettes, the bailout has our funds, the laws of breathalyzing put an end to our roadside bars, circle the Fords and Chevys, boys, they're coming to take our cars. <laughs> Finally got through to him what it is, what it is that, 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 that cars have to do with libertarianism. And it is time, alas, to say, how shall we put it, sayonara to the American car. The American automobile companies, Ford, GM, even Chrysler, they will live on in some form, kind of a Marley's ghost dragging their chains at taxpayer expense, you know. The fools in the corner offices of Detroit and the fool officials of Detroit's unions, they will retire to their vacation homes in Palm Beach and St. Pete. And uh, They no more deserve our sympathy than do the malevolent trolls under the Capitol Dome down the street here. But pity the poor American car when Congress and the White House get through with it. A lightweight vehicle with a small carbon footprint using alternative energy and renewable resources to operate in a sustainable way. When I was a kid, we called it a Schwinn. <laughs> hey, oh, well, you know, I mean, it, it's been a great run. It's been a great run. 110 years since the Duryea brothers built the first American car in Springfield, Massachusetts. Now, if the Duryea Motor Wagon Company had been a success... Springfield, Massachusetts might be today's motor city, full of abandoned houses, unemployment, drug dealing, violent crime, and racial tensions, which, come to think of it, Springfield, Massachusetts is full of. Anyway, uh, but we owe the American car a lot more than just the entertaining spectacle of Detroit's various felon mayors. Uh, in, in, in fact, many people my age owe our very existence to the car, or to the car's back seat, where... <laughs> Where if our birth date and our parents' wedding anniversary is a bit too close to com for comfort, <laughs> it's, it's probably where we were conceived. You know, there was no premarital sex in America before the invention of the internal combustion energy. <laughs> engine. I mean, talk about libertarianism here. Come on. You mean, you couldn't sneak a girl into the rec room at your house because your mom and dad were unable to commute, so they were home all day working on the farm. And your farmhouse didn't have a rec room because recreation had not been invented due to all the farm work. You could take a girl out in a buggy, but it was hard to get her in the mood to let you bust into her corset because the two of you were facing the hind end of a horse. <laughs> Spoils the atmosphere, you see. So cars, they, cars let us out of the barn, you know, and, and while they were at it, they destroyed uh, the American nuclear family, and anyone who's had an American nuclear family knows what a relief that was. Um, Cars also caused America to be paved, and there are much worse things you can do to a country than pave it, as the Sudanese have been proving in Darfur. And do we car people ever hear a single word of thanks for paving the nation from all those skateboarders and body casts? No, no, I don't know. No. Cars fulfilled the Americans' founding father's dream and ideal. Of all the truths that we hold to be self-evident, of all the unalienable rights with which we are endowed, what is the most important to the American dream? It is right there, front and center, raison d'etre of the de uh, Declaration of Independence, freedom to leave. Freedom to leave. Freedom to get the hell out of town. Founding fathers, can I have the keys? You know? Car provided America with an enviable standard of living. You could not get a steady job with high wages and health benefits and retirement uh, uh, plan working on the General Livestock Corporation assembly line putting udders on cows. You know. The American car was a source of intellectual stimulation. Think of the innovation, the invention, the sheer genius that transformed the 1908 Model T Ford into the 1968 Shelby Cobra GT500 in the course of one man's lifetime, single lifetime, of full of speeding tickets. You compare this to the previously fashionable mode of human transportation, horse design and production has changed thousands of years, thousands of years. And when it comes to creativity, you know, you know, nobody thought to put a stirrup on a saddle until about 500 A.D., 
Thousands of years, people are riding horses, and they didn't think up the stirrup until 500 days. Where would they put their feet? I, you know, I mean, now, if automobile engineering and development had proceeded at that pace, we would be powering ourselves down the road by running with our feet stuck through a hole in the floor like Fred Flintstone, you know, which, uh, 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 and it may come to that with the 2010 Obama-mobile. You know? <laughs>